what is going on everybody taylor here and wow has it been a while <laughs> since i've done that as an intro some of you may have been subscribers to this channel for long enough or viewers of this channel for long enough to know that i used to very regularly do trailer reactions and movie reviews like this with a camera in my face Lately, it's mostly been the Bracket Show on this channel, or it's been um, the podcast where I've still been reviewing movies and talking about movies I've been excited to see, but this format has been missing on this channel for a while, and I'm really excited to jump back into it, even if no one remembers me, <laughs> and this falls flat on its face. But there is a movie that I got to see recently at the Phoenix Film Festival. It's not released yet. It's not releasing until May the 2nd on streaming. And I'm actually very devastated that it's not going to get a big theater release because I want more than anything to one, see it again, and two, get to see it again on a big screen with a crowd because seeing a genuinely great rom-com with a crowd is such an incredible experience and I'm so thankful to the Phoenix Film Festival for giving me the opportunity to do that. I am of course talking about the idea of you. It is going to be a film that is available on Prime Video for people to stream but man I really wish I had connections to call someone and be like we need to get this a theater rollout especially after how successful anyone but you has been at the box office um, and how clearly people are just craving those really, really quality, fun, chemistry-filled rom-coms. This shot to the top of my list when I saw it. I was so intrigued and I just got to tell you guys, it's something that I don't think people are ready for in the best possible way. So the idea of you stars the gorgeous, incomparable, absurdly talented and wonderful Anne Hathaway, and it also stars Nicholas Galitzine. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, I my apologies. He's never going to see this video, so we're doing our best here. <laughs> but he is clearly a rising star. The has been working for 10 years but is an overnight sensation kind of guy with all the projects that he has coming out right now. He was absolutely phenomenal in Red, White, and Royal Blue. That is also one of my new obsessions at the moment. Um, haven't If you haven't checked it out and you're into rom-coms, into the enemies to lovers trope, that one is for you. He's great in it. I'm going to be watching and doing a reaction series to Mary and George, which is the stars through us at stars. I think it's BBC, um, in Europe that is making it, that is, is distributing it. But here I had to pay for stars so that I'll actually be able to watch it. But all of that to say the two leads in this film are stunning, physically stunning, where you see them on screen and you're just like, wow, I knew that these two actors were very attractive, but they are hot. They are so hot in this movie. They are so hot and sexy together. The chemistry is so palpable. And there are moments where you're sitting there going, oh, this is a little steamy. And watching this was with an audience is great, but also I'm just going to pretend <laughs> that I'm not watching this with an audience in the best possible way. They're, they're, you can tell they had so much fun filming together that they got along, that they really poured themselves into these characters. And I am so happy to say that. One of my biggest gripes with rom-coms in more recent years specifically has been feeling like two actors with, you know, names who are up-and-comers or who um, are already A-listers, they kind of get thrown into a rom-com because... They, the believability of being able to sell it, you know, from a studio perspective or what, you know, the casting perspective is just based on that. Whereas with this movie, you go, oh, 
they did a chemistry test and you can tell it was off the charts and that's how they got cast. And that is something that I have been craving so badly in rom-coms because that's, that's the important part, right? Like the story can be cheesy and the budget can be nothing and it can be kind of a mess. And, and as long as that heart is there, as long as the chemistry is there, as long as you believe that those actors believe what they're doing and believe that they're falling in love with each other, even though you know they're acting like that is the heart of a wonderful rom-com of, of a wonderful movie with any sort of romance in it, even if, if that's not, you know, the, the main genre of the film. And this excels with that particularly. And that alone just makes it wonderful. But also, as someone who is a big a boy band girly and always has been, okay, and one of my first concerts ever was in sync when I was like nine. And I have, I lived, I'm still technically casually in it, but I lived through the height of the One Direction phase. Like, was in it for the whole X Factor thing. Like, went to see them when they toured here in the U.S. I think it was their first U.S. tour where they were touring up all night. I don't even know if the album was out at that point. I think it had, like, just come out. All that to say, for someone who is big into that kind of music, when it's just fun, like, this movie does such a great job of presenting August Moon as the boy band and having Nicholas Galatine's character be the kind of lead of that boy band and having it sit in that universe. It just, you can tell it was made by people who understand that. You can tell it was made by people who, um, or at least were fans, are fans of that, right? Because you watch the performances, you know, the Coachella performance, and you hear the songs that were specifically written and performed for this movie. And you you see the, the music video that they're filming. And I'm not going to lie, as someone who, again, was in the midst of all the height of the One Direction stuff, seeing the August Moon music video, like the snippet of it that's in this movie, I sat there and went, I feel like I'm being violently transported back to seeing One Direction music videos like premiere um, because there was just it's 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 in the subtleties of it and for me it was just so awesome to have that and have it be to me at least feel genuine it never feels like they're making fun of it it feels like again people who love and understand and appreciate that kind of music and that kind of fun um and the songs are catchy as hell. Like, there's only two that have technically been released at this point that you can listen listen to. Both bangers. Absolute bangers that I already have on repeat. Closer um, and Dance Before We Walk. Already at the top of my, like, music library most listened to list, whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> But I really can't wait for the rest of the soundtrack to be released because the music is genuinely so fun and so catchy and is so listenable uh, on its own merit, which is so awesome. It's really great that Nicholas Galatine was uh, able to really do it, you know, to, to sing the songs and to learn enough of the dancing to to make you believe that he's this this pop star, this teenager that was kind of swept up into this world and and ended up in the biggest boy band out there. Um, and I'm very thankful, you know, that um, that he didn't somehow get swept up into the reality of that in real life because as great as it would have been to have another fabulous boy band out there, especially one led by Nicholas. This universe, this timeline is wonderful because we get him now as an actor and a singer. And that's just us being deprived of that would have been a travesty, to be completely honest. Um, 
but yeah this this movie was just so fun and it's so it's just made with such joy and I am so excited for it to come out on streaming so I can watch it again and again and again probably this one I think is very easily going to go on my list of uh rewatch movies of, of comfort movies and uh I'm I'm just so excited for people to see it because I think it's so beautiful to have a movie like this but also that's so focused on women being empowered particularly I hate saying this but older women because I guess 40 is old which it's not but but in this context especially with rom-coms um and Hollywood uh it, it kind of is and just having this beautiful wonderful story where a 40 year old 40 year old woman gets to embrace what she wants and gets to embrace you know her her sexuality and her desires and and you know she has trials and tribulations through the film where it's very much the world doesn't want her to be able to do that which is very realistic unfortunately but it is really um, empowering and emotional to to watch her character go through that um, and to really get that kind of representation on screen and yeah I'm I'm so excited for everyone to get to see this again I'm, if anyone wants to join me I'm starting the campaign petition to actually get this into theaters because I just think that people would eat it up and respond to it the same way that they did to anyone but you and I know there are a couple of like screenings technically still happening in places that I'm trying to talk myself out of like driving six hours away to be able to see it in a theater again, just because I did love it that much. And I loved getting to see it with a crowd that much. Um, but I, I cannot recommend this movie enough. It's, it's so joyful and it's one of my favorite movies of the year and it's probably going to stay there. Um, I know we have such an exciting year of films ahead, but this one is just, it hit me in the exact right way and made me so happy. And I really hope that you all take a moment to check it out when it does drop on streaming. And uh, if you have already seen it, if you've been to one of the film festivals that it's been at, or you've had a screening for it, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you're, if you haven't, and you're just really, really excited to see it, I'd love to hear about that also. Um, if you guys made it through this video of me stumbling my way through doing this <laughs> for the first time in a long time, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking the time to check this out. You guys are wonderful. Until next time, all my links for social media are down in the description. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Letterboxd, Tumblr, <laughs> all of the places. There's also a link to the Patreon below. It is the Lights on a Screen Patreon for the podcast, but I will also be posting content there from just the finely tailored realm of, of content, of videos, of whatever. So if you'd like to support, there is a tier for $1 where you can support us there. Thank you guys again, and I will see you next time.